Aloha. Welcome to another episode of Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Uh, many people believe that education can be the silver bullet or the linchpin that can help solve problems like homelessness, drug addiction, social division, and income inequality. And in Hawaii, of all places, where our many intertwined cultures all cherish our keiki and do all we can to support and open doors for their successes, would we not assume that a high priority is placed on having a world-class educational system? On this show, we talk about the programs available to our keiki, the quality of our facilities and infrastructure, addressing deferred maintenance, increasing the number of cool rooms for our keiki and teachers, a more comprehensive curriculum approach, as well as appropriately recognizing and valuing our teachers and administrative staff. And perhaps most importantly, what life and career opportunities are we providing for our keiki to thrive today and tomorrow? Today, we have two wonderful guests. I'm looking forward to everyone having this good conversation with them. We have Ms. Shannon Cleary and Ms. Melissa Handy of Le Jardin Academy. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. So let's first of all, let's say, okay, um, Shannon, you are Director of Advancement, correct? Yes. All righty, what does that mean? It's a great question. I <laughs> recently was subbing for our seventh grade Japanese class, and the students asked the very same thing. And my response to them was, what's the core word that you hear in advancement? Advance. Which means ultimately... Moving forward. Right. So much of my job is really envisioning what education looks like at Le Jardin, as well as in other institutions, we feel like it's our duty to set a good example and to share that out. Um, so st strategic planning for the school, what that looks like in terms of both funding, um, communications, and communications means both internal and external for the school, um, intertwining with technology and in inside the classroom. So really moving the school forward and what education looks like moving forward and partnering with administration as well as um, our teachers and our community. Okay, excellent. Yeah. That sounds like a huge job. It's a great job. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a fun job. It's a, it's it's a fun job. Uh, who who mm -hmm. do you report to then in that? The head of school, DJ the head Condon. Of the schools. Okay, and is there a board of directors that, there is. That, that sort of sets that tone? Yes, absolutely. We have a really robust board of directors um, comprised of 19 members at this point in time. And it was through the board of directors that actually the school identified the need for an advancement director at the school. This is a new position that I just started, um, this position in this department in January of 2016. Excellent. Congratulations. Yay. Thank you. So what did you do before? Before that, I was with a public charter school, Hawaii Technology Academy, which was a blended learning charter school, the largest charter in the state of Hawaii. Um, with approximately 1,000 students from Kauai to the Big Island. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. Also the director of advancement at that school. Excellent. Uh, so, wow. So then that's your career then. Your career is yeah. supporting education. By accident, yes. By accident. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I might want to come back to that. But I want to introduce <laughs> Melissa. Melissa Handy, yes. how are you? Great. Excellent. I'm doing wonderfully. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So you Hi. are director of ed tech or education technology. We yes. lead with education in my title. It's education technology director and because that's really the most important part of the role. Okay, and yeah. what do you do? So typically in schools you have somebody in my role who's responsible for all the infrastructure at the school. Uh, servers, wireless network, printers, anything, you know, sometimes I say anything that plugs in uh, and so is electronic the, the is IT somewhere department. in my realm. Yes. Yeah. Um, but what our school did strategically um, two years ago is they said, look, we want someone who leads with the education side and, and really works with teachers and brings technology into the classroom more. So we, you know, we changed the role, um, or they changed the role, and they hired me, and I was lucky to you know, get to kind of start that program wow. at the school. When did yes. that start? Um, last July. Last July. Yeah. July okay, 2014. So to 2014. Okay, yeah, so sorry. almost two years. Almost two years. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. Um, so, what did you do before that? Um, before that, I worked for. I, I was at a, a, a. I was a director of technology at another independent school on island here in Kapolei, and I was there for seven years. And then I did a. My background is in computer science, so I I left education for two years. And sometimes I say it's it's just something that you do, and you realize, wow, I can't make widgets for a living. I got to work with kids again. Um, but I worked for a company that developed software. 
Okay. Um, for two years. Yeah, and for two years. So. Realize that your no heart, fun in that. Your heart was back, <laughs> back in, in the classroom. My heart's in the and classroom and working with teachers. And Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you both. Lucky Not for just being on the show, but for what you do. I think it's wonderful. Uh, one, th one clarification for some people that I want to make is uh, independent schools is the same as private schools. Some people yes. refer to all oh, those private schools. Mm -hmm. Well, right. independent is private, private is independent. Some That's people correct. Under understand yes. that. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so there are, of the possibilities that exist, there's independent, private, there's charter, and then there's public. Right. And then yep. putting charter, if this is, I sit on the board for Hawaii Public Charter School Network, okay. it's always important to acknowledge that charter schools are public schools. They are public schools. Yes. Charter schools are public schools. Uh, but they are afforded some different rules, or historically have been afforded some different rules, somewhere in between. Is that correct? It's correct. I would hesitate to use the word afforded oh, um, okay. because of the financial constraints for public charter schools. They're allowed. They are allowed, <laughs> um, and by being allowed, they actually can afford quite a bit less because they receive about 60% of the funding as public DOE schools do without facilities funding. Oh, wow, okay. Right. Wow, so that makes that more challenging. Though. A little bit more challenging, got that, got but are allowed to function a little bit more like an independent or a private school um, because of, of those concessions. So they have some more freedom. Yeah, that's freedom, more autonomy. Yeah. So the yeah. biggest conversation that, that we've had on the show and then in general is what's the difference between a public school and a private or independent mm -hmm. school? What's the biggest sure. difference? And before we started, we were talking. Right. Some people think that, oh, the teachers get paid more. I was uh, I was walking. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not necessarily <laughs> true. It's not necessarily yeah. true. Um, at the, and I, when I say when I hear that, it's like yeah, it, it kind of depends. Sometimes right. if teachers have been there for a while, if they're doing some certain things, maybe yes. Mm -hmm. But in general, not necessarily. Um, I was recently walking um, through Kalihi the other day, mm -hmm. and I met this um, bright, bright young man, um, <clears throat> recently out of the military. He's currently a truck driver, and we were talking and. Uh, the uh, topic of uh, teachers came up and teacher pay. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, those teachers make a bunch of money. Why do they need, why do they always ask for more money? They make a lot of money. I said, really? Do you think they make a lot of money? He goes, yeah. I was like, well, okay, do you realize that a lot of them make between thirty and 40000 a year? He's like, what? <laughs> How do they live on that? I said, <laughs> that's a really good question. Many of them have other jobs. They get married. They have roommates. And exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. so that's the important part of that yeah. is teachers are there and, and you're there because it's, it comes from your heart. It's Absolutely. your passion. It's you're driven by that, by helping these kids, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Nobody goes into teaching for the money. You go into it because you're passionate about kids. See, and I think that that should be reversed. Uh, a couple of um, couple of shows ago, we had uh, Mr. John Bickle on, mm -hmm. and we were talking, and he was telling us about his inverted pyramid uh, theory, where you know what the teachers need to be looked at differently. The money needs to be looked at differently. If we actually recognize teachers as the professionals that they are and say, you know what, you have been trained to do this, so you're going to be mm -hmm. paid accordingly. Right. There will be more people driven to want to do that, more people who would otherwise want to teach, but yes. just cannot justify yeah. the, the money for it. And that's one of the challenges. How do we make that happen? Uh, so, so anyway, I know sure. and I understand that. We agree with it, you. So. Teachers, <laughs> should <be paid> <laughs> Teachers should be paid more. Teachers should be paid more. How we make that happen is a whole other question, and that's right. where I, I look at it say, okay, it's a challenge because every time you go to legislature and you say, okay, well, we want more money, they say, well, where's it going to come from? Right. You're going to raise taxes? Oh, ooh, okay, no. Mm -hmm. Well, I say, well, why don't we start with this is what we should be doing. This is the money that is needed in order to raise the standards. Mm -hmm. Put that in the budget first and then see what, how you pay for other things. Mm -hmm. So let's put the priority on the children, yeah. Yeah. which means also the teachers. That's what I say anyway. But we, uh, we don't we disagree. Um, <laughs> the only caveat I would I would add to that is being mindful, in terms of dollars and cents, that on a one line item on a spreadsheet, mm -hmm. when you look at the ledge, it is a fairly big number. Yeah. But then, when we go down to the DOE level, where are those monies being allocated? Um, and both to teachers and school administration, and what's that pipeline for good school leadership to make those necessary changes mm -hmm. um, from within the schools themselves? I would agree with that, and that's one of the big challenges that exists, I think. Because you go from school to school, district to district. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are, there's, a, there's a, a, the challenges in one district or in neighbor districts, mm -hmm. where you've got this side of the street goes to this school and that yep. side of the street goes to another school. Mm -hmm. Those schools are completely different. Yes. The, the, I, I hesitate to say the quality of the education, but it seems as though the quality of the education 
may be greater in one school versus another. So therefore, everyone's always trying to get their geographical exception. Oh, let me go to that school. Let me go to that school. I'll send my kid there. I don't want to send my kid to that one because that's where all the, you know, uh, who knows what. Um, my question is, why is that needed? Why? Because we have, and I was saying this earlier off, off air, we have one management entity right. that controls all 255 schools. Right. Why is it that the standard isn't set here? and that we're able to collaborate between everyone to make sure that we get, okay, these programs work in this way, that way, and another way. Let's make sure all the schools across the board are working that way. I don't know why that is, and I'm not going to make you answer that question, because <laughs> um, I don't know that you would have an answer, plus it's not fair. Um, I but that's. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can we can table that. Uh, sure, sure, sure. I, it's a big topic and yeah, one that yeah. I am interested in exploring mm -hmm. because if we can raise the standard for all sure. of the schools, mm -hmm. then every one of those children has that yeah. same opportunity to thrive, and that's what it should be. Mm -hmm. For me, that's what it comes Absolutely. down to. So, all right, let's go back to yeah. let's go back to sure. to what you guys do. So, right. thank you, okay. thank, thank you, you for the little sidebar. There. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay, so one question is. With regards to education technology, yes. and this is a huge topic that I think is very important, is um, the question is how tech needs to be integrated across the curriculum. Now, okay, you're not just talking about a class where you're teaching computer science, right? right, right. You're talking about you're taking math class, you're taking English class, you're taking social studies. Sure. And so there's technology that is available exactly. right so and, and I think typically um, in the past what we've seen are pull out classes right just like you used to go to a typing class you would go to your technology class um, and then when you're in your technology class you're learning the tool so you you'd have a lesson on Microsoft Word or you'd have a lesson on how do you how to make a PowerPoint right um, and sometimes we do we do have a pull out class at our school uh, starting next year a DP which means 11th and 12th grade is a college level course, a two year course um, in computer science. So that is a pull out separate class. It's not that we never do that. It's that it's so important to treat technology like it's a literacy skill. Everybody gets reading, you read in every class. Everybody's writing, you're writing in every class. Everybody needs to learn technology. Um, and when we say technology, it's such a big umbrella, right? You need to learn computer science skills. Kids should learn how to code. Kids should learn how to select the right tools for whatever job they're trying to, you know, whatever goal they have. Right. And mm -hmm. teachers and kids need to work together to develop those skills, like you said, in math class, in writing class, in your world language classes. So no matter where you go, in, in some way, you're using technology for learning in that class. And you're learning how do historians see we're we're at a school that's an international baccalaureate Thank school. You for putting that there. Right. So we we want to make sure that our kids are not just memorizing a whole lot of facts about history and then regurgitating this is what happened on this date, right? We want our kids to think like a historian and to understand what kind of tools do historians use? What kind of technology tools do historians use? And so it's and really what are the resources it's available embedded. To them? Right? It's integrated, it's embedded yes. in their learning yes. across the school. I, I agree with that. I think I want to dig deeper into that. First, sure. I want to pull back and say, you use the term pull-out class. Sure. Just for the sake of clarity, what do you mean a pull-out class? Well, so um, a lot of times we think about this in the elementary level programs, where you have like your core class, right? Mm -hmm. You're with that classroom teacher all day long, mm -hmm. and then you're pulled out for a specials class. My um, sister's a K-2 to art teacher, and that's a specials class. That's a okay. separate kind of... Uh, so you have your basic STEM classes. Right. And then, oh yeah, you're going to have... Th this school happens to have art, so you could sure. go to art once a week. Sure. And at our school, we do have a, a lower school media class. Um, in sixth grade, we, uh, because we're an IB school, we're a little bit different. Our sixth grade through tenth I, I graders, mean. international baccalaureate. Okay, yeah, okay, got it. Our sixth graders through tenth graders take a class called design. It's not about learning a tool, so you don't go there and, and learn Microsoft Office, right? But you do go to that class and you learn how to solve problems using tools. And which is how we do things in the real world. In the real world, <laughs> once you get out of school, you, right. you're, they're not asking you to learn how to do this program. They expect you to know it now. Right. So, okay, real quick. These, these, as you're saying, pull-out classes or specials classes, mm -hmm. 
Are they electives or are they still required? So sometimes schools oh. offer technology as an elective. Um, sometimes, you know, kids can either choose between taking an arts class or a technology class. Um, because of the way our program is set up, every single kid takes it at our school. Um, when you're in the what we call primary years program, kinder actually goes all the way down to our preschool. So um, our three year or junior right, schools, we have, we have three, three, three year olds three and four in, year the olds program. in the junior school. Okay, okay. All and the way up to And there's technology grade. in Absolutely. preschool. Which yeah, not I, a lot. I have a two and a half year old. Right. right. I know full well that she can pick up a smartphone mm -hmm. and find what she wants right. on it. Now, she, she clicks on things and doesn't really get it, but she sure. finds she eventually finds her right. way through it. Right. So it's something that is just an innate thing. Oh, that picture, I like that picture. <laughs> right. Oh, and that made that happen, I like yeah. that too. So, All right, um, exactly. it happened really quickly, but we have to take a quick break now. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so, okay. so excuse us one <laughs> so second. So many so, things to say. Uh, <laughs> so thank you for joining us again. Uh, this is Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, uh, Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carl Campagna, and we have our two amazing guests today. We'll be back in one minute. Thank you. Aloha, my name is Jeff James, and I'd like to invite you to watch my show, The Military in Hawaii. It'll be shown every Friday at 11 a.m. here on thinktech.com. Aloha. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage here on ThinkTech. This show is so very dear to my heart. We talk with artists of various different ilk here about the process that they go through for their art. So we talk about what they're doing, why they're doing it, how they do it. And it's a show that is inspiring. This is what I hear from people all the time. And a show that will teach you something, sometimes something about yourself. I hope you'll join us. The show is Center Stage. It's on Think Tech every Wednesday at 2 o'clock. We'll see you then. Aloha. Hello, my name is Patrick Bratton. I'm host of Global Connections here at ThinkTech Hawaii. We broadcast live every Thursday at 1 p.m. We bring Hawaii to the world and the world to Hawaii, talking about international events and various things of interest to the audience. Please join me. I look forward to talking with you and having you get, get to meet some of my guests. Aloha. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. Uh, once again, I'm your host, Carl Campagna, and we have Ms. Shannon Cleary and Ms. Melissa Handy with us today from Le Jardin Academy. So thank you again for joining us. Um, okay, you were mentioning early, earlier IB, or International Baccalaureate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Please help us understand a bit more what that means and how that occurs, how you become eligible for that. It's a great question. Um, as the newest person or one of the three newest people at our campus, it's something that I continue to learn more and more about. And our head of school, um, DJ Condon, has been part of the IB world for the last 20 years, um, just moving back to the state of Hawaii from Asia. And he likened it to a nice, neat bento box. So when we were all growing up, we all had AP courses and those options. When you have AP courses, it's more that a la carte. You kind of have a smorgasbord of maybe have in a musubi along with a corn dog. So all good things, but that don't necessarily match. And what the IB program does is really takes all of the subject areas, package, packages them neatly into what looks like a little bit of a bento. So all of the things go together so they're related. really well sure. with that kind of relation. And that's really, I think, a piece of Melissa's part at school um, and the ability to really integrate technology yeah. in the way that she has been. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, before we jump into that, mm -hmm. I want to say, okay, so inter international baccalaureate. Baccalaureate is the first degree you get. Yes. When you go to college. Absolutely. So then the little bento box is akin to a major. Yes. So it's a little mini, it's a sort of a beginning, the direction of creating someone's major from a high school perspective. Absolutely. And, and that program really does start with our three-year-olds. Um, the IB program for us is all the way through. It's a continuum. And with that said, the end product, having that mini major as um, a thought, I recently ran into two seniors who graduated three years ago um, who are finishing up their college careers in three years because the IB diploma yeah. offers them that step ahead. Which is why kids would take, Starting as they were qualified ahead. to do that, they would take the AP courses. Exactly. They're already beginning to get themselves into uh, yes. college classes for credit. Right. 
uh, which is what the AP does. So. Right. So okay. So that's I think that's I think that's wonderful. Now that isn't is that a difference from current public schools? Do, is that available yeah. at the moment in public schools? Yes, um, there yes, are there are IB programs mm -hmm. in public schools all the way. Uh, there's there's really three main IB programs that you're, you're going to see in a public school. The primary years program. So there's some elementary schools on our island here, mm -hmm. and I'm sure on maybe some other islands. Um, there is the MYP program. Uh, there's a, a bunch of them out in in Eva Beach, um, uh, Campbell High School. Um, I want to say I'm trying to think of another high school that's a uh, has the diploma program. A lot of times those schools offer the diploma program as a selective program, whereas at our school every student in 11th and 12th grade goes through the diploma okay, program. Okay. See, that's one of those things that it would occur to me that that should just be a standard, because right. that makes more sense. Now, and kids can change. You know what? I've been working in this. I don't. How I want to try that one. Okay, you should be able to do that and have the flexibility for that. The same way we do when we go to college. Right. I want to start off being an engineer. You know what? That is not as much fun as I thought it was. Right. Instead, I want to go be an art teacher. Um, great. Uh, but you, it seems to me, though, again, it, the, the, if that were a standard across the board, that yes. there could be. But that goes back to the idea of curriculum and what is included yes. and how it's included, which I'll bring us right back to yep. the technology and the curriculum. So you were talking about how you select the technology. Sure. So can go in a bit more about how yeah. you would look at that and how you would want to approach selecting technology. Sure. And I'll, and I'll start by commenting on what the IB, pro, you know, IB programs are great and not all schools can do an IB program. Um, but one of the things that all schools can do, all teachers can do, is the deeper learning, right? So what, what the IB program lets you do in 11th and 12th grade is get deeper on a topic. You're focusing on that same class for two years. Yeah. Um, with the technology and where the technology comes into play, is it, we always say in my on my in my department, don't let the technology get in the way of the learning. Right? Yeah. It should never be like this thing that's so obvious. It has to be stealth. It has to feel like it's just. By the time you get to high school, kids know which tools to use when. Um, you know, they're able to select the tool that's. You start with what's the goal. You start with what's the problem I'm trying to solve. Then you select the tool. A lot of times what we do is we say, well, we have this tool we want to use. So well, let's make let's, everything work we're through gonna that make tool. Every, you know, I'm, I have a hammer, and I'm going to use a hammer no matter what I yeah, do. Even though I've got <laughs> screws, I'm going to drive right. these screws right, into the wall. Just, this is the tool I'm, I like. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it it's starts in the elementary program. Um, one of the things that's great about the IB program is we're required to constantly continue training our teachers, yes. and we send our we spend a lot of money to send teachers off island trainings um, every two three years. Every Professional is development trained. at the school, um, and not just on the teacher level across the school campus, which I think sure. is also a piece of they, everybody on campus. Is a, is they a do have I know they have that in the public schools as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably dealt differently. Yes, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and ours is very is international baccalaureate specific, right? Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. you've got requirements in right. order to maintain that Absolutely. status. Right. So therefore, that means there's a certain number of hours that right. the teachers need to go through in order exactly. to re maintain your qualifications right. for that. Exactly. So. But we're saying we're going to start with teachers, and we have somebody. Um, the way we team at our schools, we have the technology department. Um, we have a lower school teacher who's focused on teaching tech skills to the lower school kids. Um, we have design teachers that teach, you know, t uh, problem solving and design thinking in our middle school program. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a, a person who's on my team. Her her role is uh, educational technology specialist, and her role is to be an embedded trainer. So rather than teachers just going off to training, we have somebody that's right there teaming with the teachers, helping them to choose, the, learn how to choose the right tool. Um, helping them to understand how, how do you work with that tool in a classroom setting, right? Sometimes tools work great if you have all the time in the world, but in a classroom setting, you might have a limited amount of time. You can't wait for Windows 98 to load for 15 minutes, right? Um, what? <laughs> it's not good. Um, so it's everybody's responsibility. The classroom teachers eventually get better at this. The, we train the kids so once they're in high school, they know how to yes. select tools. Yeah, so okay. So it's it's integrating it mm -hmm. is your term as well which right. is which is exactly perfect you're integrating Embedding it from it. preschool 
right. so that you know what you're getting used to all of these different tool options just right. as part of what you're learning before you even realize that you've just learned how to use this tool sure. you, you have familiarity with it yeah. and then at some point you get to the point where I now need to problem solve right. which yes. is a wonderful thing that some curriculum doesn't really allow for um, it's a wonderful thing that we're teaching the kids how to problem solve thank you for doing that so now they say, I need to solve this problem. And now they have a bank of tools to choose mm -hmm. from. And that's what you're saying, is giving them right. a, this, here's this technology that's available to you. Right. And this is how it's used to make the best choices to solve your problem, whether right. it's writing this paper on this topic. Or and, and teachers learn, you know, I think in the past we used to have a, a scenario where every kid had exactly the same thing, because the school provided the device. Mm -hmm. In our program, from 6th grade through 12th grade, they bring their own. They bring their own laptops to school. So every kid doesn't have the same software. Um, by the time they're in 6th grade, and we actually have this wonderful um, uh, kind of culminating project in 5th grade called the Exhibition, and every kid does something different, and the, the teachers are amazing. You know, it's like an acrobatic feat to work with all these smaller groups of kids, and um, they come up, they... Um, there's a group doing a uh, project on screen time. Last year there was a great group that did um, holistic health and they had like a, their exhibition was this quiet room where you could go and meditate and get a little massage, right? But they're doing research on um, different topics and in fifth grade that's their first shot at learning, at, at actually selecting the tools that they're going to use for their project. Wow. Um, and then teachers understand all the way up through middle school and high school, they don't say, you're going to make a PowerPoint, that's the end result, right? They say, you're going to think about this problem, you're going to analyze it, you're going to evaluate, you're going to come up with what you think is a solution, and then you're going to communicate it using the tools you know how to communicate with, and you select, and every kid has a different And the selected. tools, I think yeah. that not just you know how to, one of the things that I had the good fortune of sitting in on yesterday, yeah. Melissa and her team spoke to our lower school parents um, with our lower school principal, and I think Mike and teed up the conversation really beautifully. We had three of those fifth grade students who were sitting there working in a shared Google Doc together because that was the tool that they wanted to use, mm -hmm. not because it was mandated. It's how they found that they were going to communicate best together, to collaborate on this project together, mm -hmm. and that could have just as easily been a tri-fold out cardboard something that was going yeah. to be presented but this is part of that critical thinking communicating and then the tools are available and one of the things that um, the position that you were talking about that Liz Leslie really brings to the program that in my opinion every school should have is that embedded coach is that embedded trainer for teachers because moving teachers yeah. forward and having that training and that support tools are out there there are more things that are available right now for technology than we could possibly consume. Right. Yeah. And it's about that. having that person who's there to be able to not only research it, but assist with the implementation and give that real yeah. coaching. And that's something that I couldn't be more proud of at Leisure Dad. Yeah, no, that is an important thing. And, and with that, then jumping back a little bit, the, mm -hmm. the thought of the kids are choosing which tools. Mm -hmm. Part of that is, did you choose the right tool? Right. Mm -hmm. And you chose that tool and you went through this whole process and you completed it using that tool. Okay, that's great. That means you're probably comfortable with that tool. Yeah. And did you think about using another tool and how what you just did could have been perhaps, uh, I don't know, more comprehensive, mm -hmm. could, be, could have been larger, could have, the communication method could have been greater using a different tool. So that's part of that learning process. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Is that and what this embedded coach helps with? Or is that just part of the embedded coach probably helps more with getting teachers to be comfortable yes. opening the door for students to have that freedom the students will take that freedom and Absolutely. run with it they love to learn new tools oh, um, yeah, it, it's yeah. kind of a natural thing for them they, they in fact um, in this day and age you know I think parents probably get frustrated because my kids on Facebook but now they're off Facebook and they're on Tumblr and now they're on snapchat right they're all over the place on different tools Yes, They're comfortable uh, learning and I'll tools. say, as a parent, <laughs> some of those things are not allowed. Right, and it's some of those yeah, things need to be scary. limited. And yes. I'm sorry, Snapchat doesn't work for me. Yeah, uh, if you are below the age of 18, that's right. personally yeah. in my house. Right. So anyway. Yeah. Well, and we, and we can talk about that too. But I wanted to bring up, um, and I think you said the word earlier, stewardship. Right. Mm -hmm. We're uh, faculty is a really big dollar item on your budget in a school. Yep. Um, another 
Let me take a quick break first and we'll yeah, come back absolutely. to that. Okay, so we do have to take another quick okay. little break. Um, so this is Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, and I'm your host, Carl Campagna, with Shannon and Melissa. See you soon. Yeah, excellent. Aloha, I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet, please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Aloha, how you doing? I'm Gordo the Texar here on Think Tech Hawaii, where we co-host Hibachi Talk where we talk about technology and bring in all kinds of cool guests. Also, my co-host with me today is... Andrew. Andrew, the, Andrew, the security guy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Think Tech Hawaii, and thanks for watching Hibachi Talk. We also have Angus. Have you there, lad? It's Angus. I bring in all kinds of wee things. Oh, look, you see my lips moving. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host, Carl Campagna, and we have Shannon Cleary and Melissa. Handy. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so jump back in. Uh, we were talking. Um, it was, well, there's a few things actually. That, uh, you were. You, uh, please restate. Right. So I, where you I, um, I was thinking about. Um, you know, schools spend a lot of money on teachers. Yes. Schools also spend a pretty big budget item on technology. And a lot of times that technology is hidden in the background, right? It's the, it's the wiring in the walls that sends the data around the school. It's the internet connection coming in. Um, it's the wireless technology. That All that stuff comes with a big price tag. Yes. And so when schools are thinking about putting technology into classrooms, and a lot of times schools choose to just do the infrastructure and they don't put the technology into the classrooms. Um, so if you have a limited budget for tech in classrooms, how can you be thoughtful about what you buy, right? And, and so this is also something that we want teachers to think about. But school administrators and legislatures, people who are deciding how we're going to spend money in schools, um, you don't want to just buy. Somebody asked me about a 3D printer, um, and I and I said as soon as we have the curriculum in the unit that's dying to have a 3D printer, uh, because that really meets the learning goals, then I'm going to race out and get one. Um, but right now, you know, there's there's always this wave of the next big thing that's um, expensive well, and shiny. What I think is great is that your school is thinking about it and there are people asking about something like that. Right. Um, whereas other schools, they don't even know what that means. They don't right. know what that is. Um, which, again, different topic. But, yeah. um, okay. Um, one thing that is important that gets talked about a lot, and uh, uh, part of so one of the points that you wanted to bring up, I want to jump into a little bit, and mm -hmm. that is the parent-school partnership. And to me, it's, it's more than parent school, it's also community mm -hmm. right. as well. So I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Um, so please. Well, and, and actually, um, and I'll turn it over mm -hmm. to you too, but you had said something before about you're a parent, I'm a parent. And, it's, and you know, you, as a parent, you have to set some guidelines in the home about you know, what social media tools, yeah. how old are you when you get your first cell phone, you know, things like that. I think that's an interesting That's a very to interesting discuss. topic. In fact, <laughs> we're having Every those conversations time. right yeah. now in our household. Because we yes. have our 17-year-old, our 15-year-old, we have our 10-year-old, our 8-year-old. Like, okay, who gets what and when? And yeah. obviously, the they team. all, everybody wants to be equal, right? Hey, wait, 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 they've got it. Why can't I get it? Well, okay, how do you define those limits and how do you make them understand right. that? That's a whole different topic. Right. But, mm -hmm. yeah. That's, the topic should be in every school and is in, in most. And again, I'll go back to yesterday's meeting. Um, our principals in each division have coffees every single month with our parents. And again, as somebody who's new to the school, it's astounding how many parents attend. Right. And those conversations organically happen. Um, we're fortunate to be a part of, when we talk about that parent-teacher relationship, um, for a school of our size of 845 students in Kailua, where the old drive-in used to be on Kampa'a <laughs> Kauri Road, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I think when families come back up to that place, it's a very comfortable atmosphere for people to come up and feel that sense of community and, and are very open mm -hmm. to having tough conversations. Right. And these are tough conversations because 
these things didn't exist when we were in school. And what is natural to our digital native children is not natural and it's not your comfort right. level. And I'll go back to your it's comment a moment ago <laughs> saying, this is not okay for not somebody okay under X age. And yeah. we, we had a parent yesterday ask a question um, about Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. And um, Melissa answered it really beautifully. Right. Why can't and parents why access the Google Classroom? Yeah. Mm. That and, was the question. And, the question was yeah. that. And can you imagine what maybe that answer would have been? Uh, I, wow. No, <laughs> I cannot imagine. Because as, as a parent, <laughs> as a parent <laughs> my thing would be access. like, okay, I want access. Yeah. I, I can actually see why it would, really wouldn't be appropriate. Because frankly, as a parent, I have better things to do. I have other things I should do. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to trust and respect the teachers and the program and what's happening. Right. Um, Hopefully, we've been able to make the choice for our children right. to get into the right school so that we trust it anyway. And if we have to start monitoring what's going on, right. it sounds like that's more of a problem. Right. And, and our educators are there, and I'll let you um, answer the same way that I think you did yesterday. Uh -huh. um, you know, you're not allowed into your brick and mortar classroom just to pop in right. on your kid's class yeah, yeah. during the you're day. You're really not. But you went even deeper. Yeah. Than well, that, and, and this, this um, there's a parallel here with the social media stuff too, right? There, there is a digital space that belongs to students. It's just like when you're down at the playground. When I was a kid, you'd go outside right after school, and you came mm -hmm. home at dark, right? Yeah. And you ran to the playground. You right. were at the pool. You did all. You rode bikes in the neighborhood. That doesn't really happen. You were down the down the um, street at the stream, right, throwing yeah. rocks in or something. Oh, yeah. And you had a lot of private conversations with your friends. Yeah. You had a community space that was meant for only your peer group. And in the in the school, you know. We do have a responsibility to have that partnership, and actually, the school, the parent-school relationship, is so critical. And, and we use a, yes. a different tool um, that enables teachers to, or parents and teachers, to communicate about what kids are doing in terms of, um, you know, where do they stand with their learning, right? But we also, in schools, are a safe place for kids to fail and kind of figure out how to succeed on their own. And so sometimes, that's, that's, yeah, I mean, let me jump in there right there. Space, yeah. That's a huge and very important thing for kids to understand. Yes. Right. Please fail. Mm -hmm. Please yes. fail. Because then you Feel will yourself, better yeah. know how to succeed. Mm -hmm. Because that, how many kids are afraid of failing? Mm -hmm. And how many parents are afraid of their children failing? And because right. what that, is that going to mean? Oh my God, he right. failed this, she failed So that. allowing them to fail right. and giving them that space, yeah. that safe space to fail is so important and, and it's a, and, and it's a topic to I, mean, I, I uh, with 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 one of my kids the topic comes up as okay you're doing well in these classes but this one you didn't you're not doing so well in it why right. and, I, and we start to drill in on it and yeah. it's important sometimes and that's where it's up to mm -hmm. the teachers and I only know about it because the teacher sure. lets us know by the way this child isn't doing uh, well, you can use a little bit more help I think or a little more time spent right. on this some encouragement. Yes. With my son, it's a reminder to stop procrastinating. Oh. <laughs> There's that too. There's right. that too. So um, but I, one thing, I'd like one thing to share I wanted, a resource oh, too. Okay, I wanted one of the jump in is you, you said a really interesting phrase, and Zuri repeated it in my ear. Uh -huh. Digital native. Ah, uh, yes. yes. Please, please <laughs> um, elaborate. It's funny. I think that it's such a normal term right, for us. In our, um, in our uh, yes. So, s children and students today who are born into a world that the internet is just part of your life. Mm -hmm. For us, yes. we're, we're digital immigrants. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Some of us are more able to act That's more naturally yeah. as natives. Yeah. But it was um, learned. We but had it's to learn learned. It. We had to it's put a learned it later. behavior. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's certainly a challenge. But when we look at the, you know, we all grew up with maybe telephones that were attached to a wall and had a, and you, you had to have the long the cord. Mom, so buy the right long there. cord. Right. Mom, buy the buy long, the long cord. cord. I need my privacy. <laughs> Just go around the corner um, to the dining room. You show that to a, a digital yeah. native, and they're like, what is this thing? Yeah. That's just a um, fascinating right. concept, a fascinating mm -hmm. way of stating that, because it's so true. Um, we, I, I've talked with my kids, and I talk with people about how, I, I put it this way, our kids right now mm -hmm. are standing on the shoulders of what our digital technology is, standing on the shoulders of the internet. Mm -hmm. So they're learning based on knowing that this stuff already exists. Right. We learned with something else completely different. Mm -hmm. So exactly what you're saying. So therefore, what I find amazing to think about is 
we were able to create this, what are they going to create? Exactly, uh, and technology moves. Things. Knowing that so they're starting yeah. from here. Right. right. Wow. And, and they have a global audience, and they have all the information you can want across the entire world at their fingertips. Yes. And, and we yes. used to have to like ride the bike to the library. Oh man, you <laughs> going through Open and your pulling, out your, <laughs> pulling out your cards. Right. Okay, this is supposed to be where in the library? What right. about the yeah. Dewey Decimal System and how to make that work? Right. And now it's such a Google it. Google yeah. it. Oh yeah, and here's the resource in that document. And oh, by the way, log into this and you can get this. And okay, great. I'm now I've and that's where the problem solving, critical thinking, communication skills yeah. that we're so proud of that I think that maybe you have alluded a couple of times mm -hmm. that may be missing from some different educational what components. Makes us different. Yes. Um, and it is what makes us different because the, the information is there. That notion that we need to memorize something um, is, is gone. But what do we do with it? And that's what's going to enable your children to create beyond the beyond the, in a more yes. timely way. The interesting thing way. is, um, I have a degree in history. So I was forced to memorize the, a lot of sure. things, dates mm -hmm. and figures and mm -hmm. all that stuff, and that was part of it. Yeah. But the further I went on in my education, I mean, that was in high school stuff. We remember mm -hmm. the, what happened and remember the sure. Abraham Lincoln this and, you know, Louisiana purchased that. Okay, great. I remember the dates and who was involved right. and, and all that stuff. And that was what they seemed to care about. Sure. You get into the university level and they care a little bit less about right. do you can you remember that and, and how, about, how about okay but why did that happen right. Right. they want you to synthesize what's the context of what was going right. on there right. how do you what does that then mean extrapolate that into modern times and how so those ideas mm -hmm. i can see some kids are learning in mm -hmm. fifth and sixth grade how to begin to think about that and we hope that they're and learning, we're learning that, that from even earlier. Yes. Well, they're not. <laughs> In my opinion, they're not learning it from earlier, and they're not even all learning it at fifth and sixth level. Um, so anyway, okay. Um, you were talking a bit about okay, what sets you apart? That was a big thing. So what, what, what would you think as far as Les Jardins Academy? What sets you apart from other schools? It's mm -hmm. those things. Our students are really empowered mm -hmm. to collaborate and create. Um, our students are a part of that global, really that globalization and that international feel, knowing ourselves locally as well as what that means in the context of the world. Um, yeah. These are huge strands of what are important um, and important parts of our program and, and how everything is related. So again, going back to that bento box that these pieces, it's not one strand or another. Right. It's these things that coming together create the full reason. educational right. experience which allow our students as they move forward whether it's from junior school to lower school yeah. or lower school to middle school mm -hmm. um, our high school is just in its 10th year this year um, well our 10th graduating class mm -hmm. um, so it's new and yet our students are doing really incredible things mm -hmm. um, beyond because they're creating and they're taught to be critical thinkers from a very young age. Well, yeah. excellent. Let me, um, I think that's wonderful. I have a, so do I. a lot of different questions and I, I, have, I would love to have you come back sometime uh, to talk more to. about more of these ideas. Um, but unfortunately, I think we've already come to the end. <laughs> it happens all too quickly. I know. Yeah. And there's so many things that we, I, I, couldn't get to, um, but that's why I would love to have you come back again sometime Excellent. in the future. Sure. We could talk more about some more of these issues. Um, some of it is just a good conversation to have. Mm -hmm. Others are, because one, th one thing I didn't get to is what are some of the challenges that you face and what are some of the solutions that, you can, that, are, that you're trying to come up with right. in order to solve those problems. Mm -hmm. So I, I would love to get there at some point, but we cannot right. at the moment. Yeah. So I will say thank you so much. Thank you for everything you do. So. <laughs> um, I think that yeah. the, your academy is wonderful. It. And I think that we need, as a state, to look to examples such as Les Jardines and see how we can get that to all of our students. And that's a thing that I would love to have happen. So thank you so much. So thank you for joining us. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and, and uh, Reformers. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Today we had Ms. Shannon Cleary and Ms. Melissa Haney mm -hmm. uh, thank, of Les Jardines Academy. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Have a good week. <laughs>